Hi everyone, my name is Leah and today I'm going to show you how to create templates for your consult notes so that you can improve your efficiency in Oscar Pro or in Divicare or any Oscar version that you use. So a lot of specialists have asked me how to do this so that they can systemize their practice and save time with writing their, their consult notes. So I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing you need to know is that you need admin privileges for your Oscar. So if you have admin privileges, you'll see that admin tab right there. And I'm going to show you the process and then show you how to make it a little more uh, easy because it is a little bit difficult to create these templates if you don't have HTML knowledge, but I'll show you in a way that uh, you should be able to do it yourself. So well, the first thing is if we search form, so the, the templates for the rich text editor are under eForms and they're actually under images. So under the eForms and admin, you're going to go to upload an image. And here I just want to show you that there is this file called custom.rtl and the RTL is the extension that you need to create a template. So in this file, you will find all of the programming terms that you can use to auto populate your template. So what does that mean? I'll show you now. So if we go to our test patient here and I open up a new rich text letter, our goal here is to have a template that will appear here. And I've created one called Oscar test. And you see that you will have this template that automatically pops up. Let's say the referral doctor was me and my presenting complaint for this patient was, let's say appendicitis and any recent Rx. So I didn't program this properly. So that's why this is showing up here. So I'll show you how to fix that in the future. Let's just say test for now. And then you see that my template automatically populates with the date, the doctor that I just put in Thank you for referring the patient's name, the patient's age and sex, and the diagnosis that I just put in. It auto populates the past medical history, which if you've charted your note properly should appear here. Recent medications that you put in here will also appear right here and their diagnoses here. Then you have your space for your HPI. You can add in what you want, add in your usual progress note. You can add in things like pertinent negatives that you don't want to forget to ask and to show that you've asked these things and they're not part of your, your diagnosis here. And then your impression. This says allergy because the name of this test patient is allergy test. So it's displaying the first name here. And then the plan, we discuss lifestyle interventions. Let's say you always talk about smoking cessation so you can write out your templates here. I encouraged Mrs. Allergy to do such and such and follow-up will be planned in six out of 12 months. So I add in the six there and you can program all of this so it's automatically there. You can also put in things like a header picture for your clinic logo, but today I'll just show you how you can actually put in this information so that it auto populates and makes your life a little easier. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because to upload a new template, like I showed you here. So if we want to upload an RTL file, we have to actually create this RTL file. And to do that, you will need an HTML editor on your computer. Now I'm using a Mac and the editor that I use is called Cot Editor. And if you open, if I open it here, you will see this is my template. So I'm going to walk you through it step by step. I'll create a new template so that we can do it together. So the first thing is that with Cot, um, Cot Editor, you need to make sure that you can save it as a rich text format. And that is the key to saving it as an RTL file. Now to create your file, you need a few key things. You need your HTML, which you type like that. And I will post a template in the uh, comment section so that you have access to this later. You also have your title. So your title is really important. And that is what the name of this template will be. 
So let's say you're a specialist who deals with um, allergy patients and you want this to be your first visit uh, regular allergy consult for environmental issues. And then we're going to put title like that. So anything in between these two, these two tags. So this is called a tag. So title and then slash title closes it. And anything in between is what will appear as the title here. Then we have these other tags, which you don't need to worry about, but I'm just going to copy and paste it for you here. And then you have your body tag, which is where your note starts. So now, instead of figuring out how to make it look pretty and to do all the tags and everything, um, you know, if you do know some HTML, basically P means new line and BR means a break in the line. But if, you, if you're not sure about how to code it, I'm going to show you an easier way so that you don't have to, you know, you know break, your, break your head over this. So there's a lot of online softwares. Uh, you just can Google convert text to HTML. And this is just one that I found called Text Fixer. Fixer. And if you're using this one, you do want to use P and BR codes in your note. And then what we're going to do, whoops, is we're going to type our note. So dear Dr. X, thank you for referring. Now, this is where you want to start to use tags. So if we go back to that file that I showed you that we opened from Oscar, this just shows you all of the available tags that we can use to auto populate. For some reason, all of them are duplicated. I don't know why, but don't worry about it. So basically you can have things like your patient's full name, your patient's first name, then last name. So full uh, patient name will be like last name, comma, first name versus first name, last name will be first name, last name in the right order. Patient name first, patient name last, um, you can have your patient's address, and then probably where it's more relevant to you is these tags here. So age, sex, medical history, recent RX are medications that you've recently entered into the active medication section. Social and family history would be from the social section. Um, other medications would be medications that you entered previously and they're no longer active, which would be less relevant if you're a specialist, more relevant if you're a family physician. Reminders are things that you've put in the reminders section, ongoing concerns in the ongoing concerns section. And if you don't know where these are, I'll just show you quickly, it's right here. So reminders, ongoing concerns, social history, medical history, family history. So all of that will be there. And provider first name, first initial is your name. Current user is you, basically the person using it. Your work phone, um, the date of today, the person who referred. And if there's no data for this in the patient's chart, you can enter this manually. So let's say I put this in the template. When you load the template later, it will automatically ask you for that name. So you can just put it in and you can put in the fax number as well. So um, here, for example, we would say, thank you for referring. Uh, we'll use patient, patient name, which is over here. So I want their full name. So we're gonna put patient name, a age, so that will populate the age, year old uh, sex, which will populate the sex for the initial complaint of, and I'm gonna put here presenting complaint. Now, when I put something like this in these number signs that are not present in this list, that means that when I load the template, like you saw when I showed you the demo, it will ask me for the presenting complaint. And if you remember in the demo, it asked me for another um, 
another area and I told you it was an error in my programming. And that's because this is the template I used. And you see, I made a spelling mistake here. I put re-ent rx instead of recent rx. And so that's why it didn't recognize this tag. And it asked me for me to put it in manually. So just make sure you're copy pasting these tags exactly as is. Otherwise it will ask you to enter the data manually. So basically once you're done putting all of it in and you make it look nice and you put in your paid, your breaks where you want them to, you know, I asked them about um, stomach pain, or you can say, for example, they have no symptoms of stomach pain, um, constipation, et cetera, et cetera. When you click on this button here, it will show it in the right form here. So it will put in all the breaks where you want it to so that it's nice. And then you paste that. I'll just go back to my uh, test that we were making here. You're going to paste that right there. And then you're going to close the body tag. So slash body. And then at the end, whoops, you're going to put in the last tag called slash HTML. And that's it. That's really all it is, is basically you just need this part, you need that part, and then in between is what you write. And the more details you write, the better your efficiency will be, especially for things that are repetitive, and you can customize this 100% the way you want. You see in this template here, I, I put breaks where I wanted the sections. So, you know, their past medical history includes, and then I put this tag for the medical history. And when I loaded it into the text here, you see that it automatically put the past history there. So that's how we did that. And that's how you create your template. Now you can make it fancier. So um, there are some HTML codes which can make the text nicer. For example, bolding text and um, italicizing or underlying text. You can do those things, capitalizing text. And if you don't know those codes, you know, they are simple. Like for example, bold is just B like that before the text and then uh, slash B after the text that you don't want bolded anymore. Um, if you don't um, know how to do this, then you know, you can definitely reach out to me and I can help you with those initial codes. Or there are other softwares online that can help you cr create a template and convert that to HTML exactly as you want it to be. And then it's just a matter of copy pasting it into your HTML editor. Now, when we're done with this, we have to save it as a rich text file. So as I mentioned, we're going to save it, let's say as untitled.rtl. So that extension must be present at the end of it. That it's here. So you see my untitled. And just in case, I'm going to add in the RTL extension so that it's for sure an RTL file. Then I'm going to go back to my um, image window. So if you forgot how we got here, let's just go back for a second. So admin eForms, and under eForms, you're going to see upload an image. And then I'm going to choose the file that we just created called untitled.rtl and upload it. And now you'll see that is appearing here. So now when I go back into my patient's chart and I want to create a new rich text letter, now my template that I created with you called untitled is right here. And you see, because we used, if we just go back for a second, remember we used this, um, this tag here, presenting complaint that doesn't exist in Oscar's database as part of the chart. So it's asking me what to put in here. So we're going to put in, like we said, appendicitis. And that's here, it's here. And the rest gets auto-populated test allergy, 14 year old female for the initial complaint of appendicitis. You wrote this part. And again, you can write the rest. You can put in your referring doctor's name if that's listed. And of course, 
you can put in images. Um, it is a little more complicated, so you have to use HTML here. It's called image circ, and then you have to put in the URL of the image, and then it will appear at the top. You do need to know a little more HTML to center it and make it look nice. So as I said, if you would like some help with that, feel free to reach out and I can, uh, I can do it for you or um, I can show you how to do it. And that's basically it for creating uh, your own custom templates. It seems like a lot of work, but I can guarantee you that if you put the time in to do it, it will be well worth your while because you will find yourself not needing to type out a lot of things that are repetitive and um, easy things like patient data that you don't want to copy from the chart into your consult letter. And then once you're you're done, actually, for those of you who, who have Oscar, uh, you can fax your consult note directly to the referring physician through your fax here. So it will um, be something that comes in, obviously, with your referral, and you just have to look that up and type in the fax number here. Let's just make up a number here. And then click on add other fax recipient and fax that off, submit and fax. And then that will appear in the patient's chart and we'll go to the referring physician as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.